Good evening. This uh, subject that we're going to do tonight is uh, the new division of Israel. Uh, in uh, Ezekiel chapter 48, uh, the message tells us, the message of Elijah tells us that uh, someday soon the land of Israel will have new borders for the 12 tribes. Now, uh, we as Brothers Truth believers understand that in the World War III that's soon to come upon the world, uh, the land of Israel will be uh, desolate. It will be uh, much war, much bombs, more, much uh, destroying of the land. There will be some that are surviving. Those are the ones that uh, the Lord will save for his own purposes. However, the, lo the land to a large degree will be destroyed with war. And the purpose of that is to eliminate the unbelievers, the people that do not believe in the Lord Jesus as the Savior. And so uh, what this study will go into is the divisions of the land as per Ezekiel 48. So what we've got here is a map, and I would like to uh, show uh, the original uh, divisions of the land and how they were set up in the old days. So let's get a close-up here. And if you look over to the, to the left, you'll see the Great Sea, and then, of course, Israel right here. And then you'll see the different divisions. Uh, for instance, you see uh, Asher on the top left, and you see... Uh, Manaseth on the top right. Uh, excuse me if I don't pronounce these names right. Uh, then you see uh, Nephtali in the middle there. And, uh, and in that little area there uh, in the top is uh, the Sea of Galilee. It's the little blue there you see in the, in the middle is the uh, Sea of Galilee. And of course you see the rest of the uh, different tribes and all their, uh, their land. And you can notice in the uh, in the old days the uh, borders were kind of uh, unique and, and, and all around. They didn't have any specific uh, design to them. It just kind of went here and there. And uh, you'll see in a minute how God uh, realigns these lands into a beautiful, uh, uh, straight, uh, even uh, division. Okay, so we'll look down here at the more of the, uh, you see Ephraim uh, there in the middle, uh, Benjamin below that, and of course uh, uh, right in Benjamin, let me try to get a closer look here for you, right in Benjamin you'll see Jerusalem right there. Now that is close to the great, uh, uh, the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is right here in the middle, and then Reuben off to the right, <clears throat> and then the big uh, <clears throat> area called Judah. You can see Judah was pretty big, and uh, that goes all the way down here to the bottom. Uh, so this was the old uh, 12 tribe portions of the land. And uh, so in, as we mentioned, in Ezekiel 48, uh, we'll take a look at that now, we see a totally different design. You, know, you can see here how it's nice and straight. <clears throat> the prophecy describes the realignment of the uh, tribes in their lands. On the top is the Dan, and then Asher, and then uh, Nepotali with Damascus right there, the little dot is Damascus, and then uh, uh, Manasseth, uh, Ephraim, Reuben, <clears throat> and of course that little sea again is uh, Sea of Galilee, and then you got Judah, and then you have something really unique here. The middle part here is designed for priests, Levites, and workers. And the sea is indicated of a city. Uh, uh, and then uh, the P's on each side uh, indicate uh, prints. So we'll go over some of this stuff with the scriptures. Over here to the right is scriptures that we'll cover and uh, explain a little bit more about the purpose of all these uh, areas in the map. Uh, Let's see, down here we have Benjamin, uh, Simeon, uh, Ishakar, uh, Zebulun, Gad. Gad is in the bottom. 
So uh, we see that's different because over here in the old days, Gad was kind of on the top, or right in the top portion of it. And now uh, it gets uh, relocated down here to the very bottom. So for some reason, the Lord has these divisions. And you'll see the, the bottom uh, five tribes have kind of a narrow, smaller area as opposed to the other tribes, if you'll see up here. They got to a little bit more larger area. Again, we don't know the reason. The Lord knows, and this is the way he wanted it to rearrange uh, in the prophecy. And then here we'll see the Dead Sea. Of course, that's close to uh, the, uh, the middle portion of the land. And uh, so anyway, that uh, is the differences between the two uh, boundaries that are prophesied. And so let's uh, now move over to the scriptures and uh, let's describe uh, some of what it says. Uh, we'll start with the priest, which uh, <clears throat> explains uh, right up here on the right side. Uh, Ezekiel 45, 4. It shall be a holy section of land belonging to the priests, the ministers of the sanctuary, who come near to minister to the Lord. It shall be a place for their houses and a holy place for the sanctuary. So we see here, right there, the, uh, the priest area. And you'll notice that's in the middle of the land, right in here. And right there where that dot is, is uh, I suppose the area where the, uh, the holy uh, uh, sanctuary will be, right there. So let's go on to, uh, we're still up here in the priest area. Let's go on to 48.10 and 48.12. Okay, 48.10 and 48.12. To these, to the priest... The holy district shall belong on the north 25,000 cubits in length, on the west 10,000 in width, on the east 10,000 in width, and on the south 25,000 in length. The sanctuary of the Lord shall be in the center. So again, we're looking at uh, this area here, which is what was just described, and then in the center, which will be right there, uh, shall be uh, uh, the sanctuary of the Lord. That's what's predicted right there. Uh, so let's go on to verse 11. It shall be for the priest of the sons of Zodak who are sanctified, who have kept my charge, who did not go astray when the children of Israel went astray, as the Levites went astray. Verse 12. And this district of land that is set apart shall be to them a thing most holy, by the border of the uh, Levites. So uh, this describes, as we mentioned, this area in here, and then it, this most this long stretch here is a, is a border, and it just said that uh, it will be uh, a thing most holy by the border of the Levites, right there, that line. Okay, so now let's go on to the second one, which says sanctuary. And that's Ezekiel 45, 2. Of this there shall be a square plot for the sanctuary, 500 by 500 rods, with 50 cubics around it for an open space. Okay, so uh, this is describing this area here. So we're getting more specific. Again, it reads... Ezekiel 45, verse 2. Of this there shall be a square plot for the sanctuary, 500 by 500 rods, with 50 cubics around it for an open space. So we see that the Lord <coughs> is very peculiar, very, very particular, I should say particular, about his requirements on spaces and designs and, and, and measurements. So uh, let's look at another one in verse 4, 45, 4. It shall be a holy section of land belonging to the priests, the ministers of the sanctuary, who come near to minister to the Lord. It shall be a place for their houses and a holy place for the sanctuary. Okay, so we read that one already. Uh, let's go to 48, uh, 
48.10, I believe it is. 48.10. And uh, to these, to the priests, the holy district shall belong on the north 2,500 cubits in length, on the west 10,000 in width, on the east 10,000 in width, and on the south 25,000 in length. The sanctuary of the Lord shall be in the center. Okay, again, we read that uh, in the top section of priests, so that was uh, a repeat. Okay, let's go down to uh, the Levites. And that's this section right in here, the middle area. Uh, let's get a close-up again once more of this specific area that we're talking about. There we go. So we can see the priest section on top, and the Levites in the middle, <coughs> and then you have the workers down below in the bottom section. And the C stands for city. And the P on each side are prince. Uh, let's see. Prince. Yeah, there we go. And these are the scriptures that we're covering right now concerning this. Okay. So let's go on to uh, Levites, which is 45.5. <clears throat> In the area 25,000 cubics long and 10,000 wide, shall be, belong to the Levites, the ministers of the temple. They shall have 25, 20 chambers as a possession. So that describes here again. And uh, let's go over here to 48, 13, and 14. I don't believe we have read those yet. Okay. Opposite the border of the priests, the Levites shall have an area 25,000 cubics in length and 10,000 in width. Its entire length shall be 25,000 and its width 10,000. Number 14, verse 14. And they shall not sell or exchange any of it. They may not alienate this best part of the land, for it is holy to the Lord. So, here they're calling this the best part of the land, and they are not allowed to sell uh, any of it, or exchange any of it. In other words, this is to remain constant and firm and unchanging. So that has a specific requirement in that middle part of the land. This is Keep in mind, this is all future. None of this has ever happened before. This is why Ezekiel 48 is a prophecy that it applies to the near future of the pre-millennial kingdom. This is all going to be set up prior to the Lord's coming. So uh, this is why it's important to understand if, if any of us today who are present truth believers believe in the Elijah message as brought by Brother Hadaf, uh back in the uh, early 30s all the way up to the mid-50s. He's the one that uh, you know gave us all the light concerning this end-time uh, premillennial phase of the kingdom. The kingdom first starts here in Israel and then it uh, uh, is the central headquarters for the loud cry around the world. This is how the designs of the land will be in the uh, post World War III, which is to happen over Israel very soon. Uh, this will be the new headquarters for the gospel. And right in here particularly, right in here will be the epicenter of where the gospel will go out. And uh, there's fascinating studies that uh, we can give later on in, in, in our post as far as our videos go explaining more of the specifics of this uh, phase of the kingdom, this first phase of the kingdom. Okay, so we'll go now to uh, uh, P area, which he has his prints right here and here. And uh, let's go to Ezekiel 45, verses 7 and 8. Verse 7, the prince shall have a section on the one side and the other of the holy district and the city's property, and bordering on the holy district and the city's property, extending westward on the west side and eastward on the east side. The length shall be side by side with one of the tribal portions from the west border to the east border. Verse 8, the land shall be his possession in Israel. And my princes shall no more oppress my people, but they shall give the rest of the land to the house of Israel, according to their tribes. So here we've described uh, a little more on the verses for this area, and then over this area.
and that's concerning the uh, uh, the prince. Um, and then, of course, it says, "My princes shall no more oppress my people." So uh, this is describing that area. Let's go over to uh, again in this prince area. It describes it on uh, chapter forty-eight, verse twenty-one. Let's go to forty-eight, verse twenty-one. And the rest shall belong to the prince, and on one side and on the other of the holy district and of the city's property, next to the 25,000 cubics of the holy district as far as the eastern border, and the westward next to the 25,000 as far as the western border, adjacent to the tribal portions. It shall belong to the prince. It shall be the holy district, and the sanctuary of the temple shall be in the center. Verse 22. Moreover, apart from the possession of the Levites and the possession of the city, which are in the midst of what belongs to the prince, the area between the border of Judah and the border of Gen uh, Benjamin shall belong to the prince. Okay, so we have uh, more explanations on this area and over on here. Okay, now let's go to the workers right here. And it goes to Ezekiel 48.18. The rest of the length along the side, the, alongside the district of the holy section, shall be ten thousand cubics to the east and ten thousand to the west. It shall be adjacent to the district of the holy section, and its produce shall be food for the workers of the city. Verse nineteen: The workers of the city from all the tribes of Israel shall cultivate it. So apparently, we have in this area here. In the workers section, uh, some some farming and some uh, some gardens and so forth, because it says the workers of the city from all the tribes shall cultivate it, and it shall be for food for the workers of the city. So apparently, this will be a green, lush area right in here, and uh, it shall uh, be for food for uh, for this whole general area. Okay, let's go to the last one, which is C for the city, and that is uh, right there in the middle of uh, the worker area. And uh, it is uh, 48, 15 to 19. The 5,000 cubics in width that remain along the edge of the 25,000 shall be for general use by the city for dwelling in common land, and the city shall be in the center. So here on this little sea area that we've got is a general use area. And uh, verse 16, there shall be its measurements, the north side 4,500 cubics, the south side 4,500 cubics, the east side 4,500, and the west side 4,500. Verse 17, the common land of the city shall be to the north 250 cubics, to the south 250, to the east 250, and to the west 250. Verse 18. The rest of the length along the district of the holy section shall be 10,000 cubics to the east and 10,000 to the west. It shall be adjacent to the district of the holy section and its produce shall be for food for the workers of the city. Verse 19. The workers of the city from all tribes of Israel shall cultivate it. Okay, let's go to uh, verse 45, 6, which again describes more of this particular area that we're looking at. 45, 6. You shall appoint as a property of the city an area 5,000 cubics wide and 25,000 long, adjacent to the district of the holy section. It shall belong to the whole house of Israel. So, uh, apparently this area here will belong to the whole house of Israel. That's what it just said. And uh, our last uh, quote will be uh, chapter 48, verses 30 to 35. These are the exit of the city. On the north side, measuring 4,500 cubics. The gates of, uh, verse 31, the gates of the city shall be named after the 12 tribes of Israel. The three gates northward, one gate for Reuben, one gate for Judah, one gate for Levi. 
On the east side, 4,500 cubics, three gates. One gate for Joseph, one gate for Benjamin, one gate for Dan. On the south side, measuring 4,500 cubics, three gates. One gate for Simeon, one gate for Ishar, one gate for Zebulun. Verse 34, on the west side, 4,500 cubics with their three gates. One gate for Gad, one gate for Asher, one gate for Neptali. Verse 35, all the way around shall be 18,000 cubics, and the name of the city from that day shall be the Lord is there. So this is our, uh, a study that we've shown about all the different uh, changes that will happen in the very last days. And again, you can find this uh, report uh, in uh, chapter 48, uh, some in 45, 46, 47, but predominantly 48 in the, uh, in the study of the new, new uh, Jerusalem and its boundaries. So we're going to go ahead and start uh, bringing uh, further reports on these charts of the present truth message of Elijah. We have more charts to go over, and uh, we look forward to uh, spreading the uh, information that the Elijah prophet, which uh, we as present truth believers believe, uh, was Victor T. Hoddoff, who came to our church, the Seventh-day Adventist church, in uh, late 1929 and proclaimed the message in uh, early 30 and uh, lasted all the way till 1955. Uh, so for about 25 years he came to our Seventh-day Adventist church and he proclaimed what many of us today believe is the Elijah message. It's growing and many people are becoming aware of it with the onset of the internet and uh, uh, you know uh, the, the mass media uh, of capabilities that we all have today. Uh, we can certainly learn this message, and it's by design. The Lord has designed that all should listen to this message prior to His church judgment. And, of course, the message does tell us that the church judgment comes before the loud cry, and that comes before the Sunday law. This is all in Scripture. This is all in spirit of prophecy. It's been hush-hush, uh, swept under the rug by the uh, leaders of our church. But that doesn't give us any excuse. Ellen White says that we will be accountable for the light we could have had, we should have had. In other words, it's in our possession. Instead of watching TV, we have the ability to pick up the Bible, start reading, start searching, and uh, we, we waste our time. We squander our time when we can be learning things like the studying of the new uh, land and, and how it will affect the tribes of Israel. You know, the tribes of Israel, the message tells us, is... Uh, is within the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We don't know it, who we are, but the Lord has counted His people from way back, and He's kept track of the seed. So anyway, we hope you've been blessed with this message, and uh, we will continue to uh, go forward with more messages uh, based on the charts. So we'd like to close with prayer. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to share your truths. Uh, may the people be blessed, and may they want to search out your truths in these very last days uh, which probation is about to close for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And uh, we pray that they search you out and uh, you guide them into all truth. Uh, thank you for allowing us to share this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you.